Welcome to Downtime in the Apocalypse, a podcast where Ted talks and Kevin listens. I'm Ted. And I'm Kevin Prime. Listeners, I'm not going to lie, life's been pretty bad for me lately, but I at least have a funny story from it. Okay, Ted. So, I was leaving Katie's house from a family morning session, really. I don't know what else to call it. I I was basically there to make sure that uh, Noah, the brother of the Aiden who has passed, yeah, uh, saw his favorite person ever, me, and watched him play video games for hours on end. Okay. And I was driving back, and this was the day after. And as you can imagine, I had not slept very well. I worked a 16-hour shift the day before. Right. Um, and the entire day, despite doing very little, was incredibly tiring. Mm, yep. And because of this, I was apparently driving like an idiot. Okay. So a police officer pulled me over and asked how much I'd been drinking. (laughs) What did you tell him, Ted? Uh, Nothing, which is true. I had not drank anything for the last 72 hours at that point. Yeah, okay. And he explains why that was hard to believe because of my driving. Then he takes a good look at me. Yeah. He goes, are you sick? And I'm like, no, no, I'm not. And I just explained the entire scenario to him. And he just looks at me and goes, why haven't you been drinking? (laughs) That's what I love about local cops. Right? It was just like, the look on this guy's face on, huh, I don't think I would have, would have like, I think, I, like, honestly, if I said I was drunk and told him why, I think this guy would have drove me home rather than gave me a ticket. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The look on this man's face was just, oh, oh. Like, like you could clearly see it's like, well, this is just getting worse. And I appreciate that, officer. I didn't get your name, but thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's uh, that's how you know like humanity's doing well here. Yeah, Let's, local touches like that. Yeah, local touches like that, and then the um, the understanding that sometimes drinking is just a solution you need to have. Yes. Um, <laughs> on that note, um, a few weeks ago, Kevin got me a very strong bottle of vodka. Oh yeah. It's gone now. Oh yes. Okay. Uh, how did you enjoy that, by the way? I mean, honestly, Kevin, um, not as much as I hoped I would, but it served its purpose. Fair enough, fair um, enough. Now, it was vodka distilled from grapes, which I had very high hopes for flavor-wise. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, but it was 60% alcohol. Oh, I mean, you gotta take some joy from some things. Yeah, yeah so it was a great mixer, actually. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. But it was closer to moonshine than anything I'm used to. <laughs> and I was expecting to have grape flavor, and frankly, that was a mistake on my part, because all that comes from different sugars for grapes. Oh, okay, right, which, right. Ferment very quickly. Ah, I see. So, honestly, I'm kind of surprised we don't get more hard liquors made of grapes because they're so sweet. Like, they can't be that hard to make them into a strong vodka. Ted, let me um, let me ask you a question here. Like, uh, let, let's spitball. We got a million dollars from, I don't know, uh, the lottery or something. Okay. Okay, so what is the, what is the brand uh, of your liquor company that you jumpstart? Oh, Ted's Tavern's <laughs> Wine and Spirits. Okay, Ted Savern's Wine Spirits, and what's your first uh, release to the public? Well, are you going to go for, like, just a generic vodka, or are you going to go for, like, uh, something a little bit more high pollutant? Oh, no, no, we have to do something ridiculous for our first flavor to, like... Yeah. Um, really set the tone? Yeah, really set the tone, <laughs> but also to distinguish ourselves from the market. Okay, true, true. So what's the what's the kind of crazy flavor you want to distinguish yourself Let's with? Let's see, it can't be spicy. That's been happening too much. Yeah, yeah, you got to tone that back, yeah. Yeah, um, steak... You go with a meaty tasting vodka. If I can get a meaty tasting vodka, if not green tea, I like green tea a lot more than I like steak. I think that's a much more palatable flavor. But I would also drink a green tea vodka, so I definitely do yeah, that. Yeah, green tea vodka. That, there we go. We just did some. Um, would it just be like Ted's, testing. Would it be like Ted's green tea vodka. No, it'd be Ted's Tavern presents green tea vodka. Yes. <laughs> I, I like that idea a lot. Just sort of like a, on the bottle, you have like a little, uh, you know, opening to a play. Yes, and no, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, yeah, I like that a lot. Uh, that's a great idea. <laughs> I'm kind of surprised there's not more tea-flavored vodkas. Yeah, not only that, there's not a lot of tea-flavored things in general. We talked about how much we enjoy green tea-flavored things on this podcast before. Yeah, very true. But you're right. There's a shockingly small amount of tea-flavored drinks. I would even think like uh, an Earl Grey vodka or an Earl Grey whiskey or something like that would be fine. So that's probably my least favorite flavor of tea, but even I would try an Earl Grey whiskey. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, I, I think that's like a basic idea. 
God, why has no one done this? Yo, is <laughs> anyone with a few million dollars kicking around? This is a good idea. Yeah, we're a gold mine down here in the apocalypse. We have nothing but thoughts to do when, when we're doing like the apocalypse stuff over here. Now I'm legitimately tr- thinking of you know making a still real quick and making some vodka that's green tea flavored. I I would uh, I wouldn't mind that. <laughs> I'll be your test dummy except it's, for the uh, blindness part. I mean, it's not gonna be that strong. Okay, fair enough. No, this is this is not gonna be. I don't want to make anything that would still be strong enough that the likelihood of exploding increases greatly. Ah, yeah, okay, fair, very fair. Yeah, no, no, there is a, there's never a non-zero point when making a homemade still yeah. about exploding, but you can definitely <laughs> lower the risk. Yeah, lower it. I mean, if you're just trying to get the majority of the alcohol out, or you know, just trying to get rid of some of the water content, yeah, way safer. Okay, okay. I can I can appreciate that. Um, so Ted, we uh, talked a little bit about that. That's that is a funny anecdote uh, going from here. But how was the rest of your week? Do anything new since I last seen you? So Kevin, Kevin Prime, Kevin Prime. I guess we're going to use titles from now on. Um, or, That's true. Hi, Elder Ted. Thank you. Uh, look, I have played two games. Okay. One was a gift from a friend of mine who. Didn't even know I was going through a rough time, but just sent me a Steam game saying, I hope everything's going well for you, friend. This was a good one for relaxing. I'm like, wow, that could not have been better time. Yeah, good timing. It's called Valhalla. Okay, I think I've heard of this. Is it like fighting game? No. Okay. There is no fighting to my knowledge. Okay. In fact, you're a bartender named Joe. Oh, now I know. I, I have that on the Switch. Yeah, in like yeah. a cyberpunk sort of setting. Yes, okay. And it's okay. a, uh, from a different friend of mine who I told was playing it, um, gave me just a few things. It is a kind of visual novel sort of thing. Right. But there is no dialogue trees. It's based solely on what drinks you serve people. Oh, okay. And can you serve people like drinks they like or dislike? Depending? Yeah, so you'll get you get less money if you serve them the wrong drinks entirely. Yeah. However, there's still different options you get when you serve them. It's like, give me something bitter, and there'll be like eight bitter drinks you can serve them. Right, okay. But the main dialogue differences come from one ingredient. So... In this cyberpunk utopia, not utopia, dystopia. Dystopia, okay. That this game is set in. All alcohol is made of six ingredients. Okay. six, Just six ingredients? Yes. Okay. And one of those is ice. All right. I shouldn't say all alcohol. All drinks are made of six ingredients. Oh, okay. Because only yeah. one of the ingredients is alcohol. Oh, so you have like ice is one, alcohol is one, and yes. then you and have then four others? Yes. And okay. they all have interesting names. Like one's called Powdered Delta. That's the only one I can remember. Okay, right, right, right. But there's a lot of drinks that just say optional, whatever the scientific E word they use for alcohol is. And you can add one shot, no shots, or as many as you like. Oh. So you can get your customers as drunk as you want them to. Right. Though they might pass out and give them too much is what I kind of understand it to be. Okay, so there's like a there's kind of like a limit or something like that. Yeah, how, there's, there's how a limit. How strong you want to make this. But also, you know, if you give someone a virgin martini, they might not like it. Well, okay, right. So, no matter what, unless they explicitly ask for sober, the first drink they get one. Okay. Just so they can taste the alcohol. Yeah. And they ask for a second, then it's exactly how interested I am in the conversation. Okay, fair enough. Um, <laughs> uh, so, if you add more, like, alcohol, does that just, like, make them, like, end the conversation faster? So, I'm, I've only played a couple of days in the game. Oh, but okay. from what I understand, they start sharing. Like, one guy just got wasted. Ah, okay, gotcha. I, I I would imagine all these people have different alcohol tolerance as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, yeah, that's what I've been doing. Besides that, um, I want to go back to something familiar. I have not been able to focus on Valhalla as much as I wanted to. Yeah. So, I downloaded a Game Boy Advance emulator. Okay. And have been playing a lot of Mega Man Battle Network 3. Uh, specifically just 3? All right, so when I was a kid, I yeah. I was very near the end, and then for a while I couldn't play the game because of, like, schoolwork or something. Yeah. And then I logged back in, and you can use left to talk to your partner or press the L button, left button. To right, get, talk. like, a hint or something? Yeah, you talk to either Mega Man or Land, depending on who you're playing at the time. And it just said, go to where darkness falls. Okay, so you had zero idea where to go. No, okay. and this is a little bit before I was aware of, like, the existence of well-written game guides on the internet that I could just look up. Yeah, okay. So I was just kind of stuck. I remember spending a couple of days trying to find this, and I just yeah. couldn't. I had no idea what they were talking about. 
Okay, I, I see. I uh, I forget if um, I think I played the same game when I was younger as well. I forget like the story if it's two or three, but um, do you mind just going through the story just a little bit? All right. So in this version of Mega Man, yeah, in this version, instead of Mega Man being a robot, yeah, he's a computer program called he's, a Net Navi. He's sort of like a Tamagotchi. Yes. Um, or a Digimon. Closer to a Digimon. Okay. Yeah. And. All net navvies can go into the digital world and travel through different computers that are network and, f- and physically um, interact with programs and change them and activate them and all that. Yeah, yeah, okay. And there's a terrorist organization called WWW. Okay, okay. Uh, world Wrestling Federation. I'm sorry, World Wrestling World. <laughs> Let's go with that. That is uh, run by Dr. Wily. Oh, okay. Who's trying to take over the world, and I think this is the game that aliens get introduced. Wait, oh, <laughs> wait, okay. I don't remember aliens in the one I played. Uh, so. Number four definitely has aliens. Okay. Are, are the aliens, like, evil? Uh, in number four, aliens are trying to take over, the, or not take over the world, destroy the world. Like, the asteroid that's about to fly to Earth is, like, cybernetic. Um... <laughs> Uh, do you have to, like, take over the NORAD and shoot it out of the sky? Honestly, I remember being the program, but I don't remember how that worked. Okay. And I think this game, I know Dr. Wild was talking to something non-human, and I, I it's probably a computer program, but whether or not that computer program is... An ex- alien? Yeah, extraterrestrial in origin okay. is uh, the question. Yeah, just whether or not this alien technology is alien technology is, is a big question. Okay. So, well, I know there's aliens in the next game. I don't remember there's one three. Oh, yeah, okay. However, Could be like a Marvel Avengers thing where they're leading up to it. Exactly. The Thanos of this world. However, I can't remember why I like this game. Now, I've enjoyed it, yeah. but even then I'm like, wow, there is such a ridiculously large amount of backtracking in this game. Oh, okay, it's yeah. Like, at one point, you know, okay, you have to hack into the school computer and, you know, get this thing. Because you, a Navi has hypnotize your friends, and you want to prevent them. And you go in, and it's like, oh, wait, no. You need something to block your eyes. So you go back out, grab something, go back in. Yeah, okay. Then you log back in. Oh, no, you have to turn on certain light switches to make certain programs work. So Uh, then you log out and try different combinations of light switches. And this keeps happening. Okay, yeah, throughout the whole entire game where you have to, like, oh, I need that item, oh, need that item, oh, yeah. And backtracking is not that easy in this game. Okay. Especially it, yeah. because when one of your friends moves away fairly early on in the story, it's like a third of the way, I think. Yeah. You can't get into his house anymore, which his computer was a shortcut to, like, kind of uh, on the hubs. Okay. Yeah, that sucks. That's like uh, that's like having a shortcut in Dark Souls, and that shortcut is just destroyed now. Right? It's like, yeah. oh, yeah, bonfire's destroyed now. You yeah. Idiot. Yeah. <laughs> Want to progress the story? No shortcut for you, my friend. It was really weird. I'm I'm still trying to figure out what I'm supposed to do because there are other shortcuts. Yeah, but none of them are nearly as good. Okay. Yeah. All right. So maybe you just have to cause some disturbance in your friend's life with his parents, so he moves back to That's hometown. It, I really don't know what I'm supposed to do about get, this. Get his dad fired <laughs> to make him move back to the hometown so he can run that store. All right. Yeah, I like that. Uh... <laughs> So that's what you've been doing, uh, games wise and everything. Yes. Uh, how about uh, your rations there, Mister Ted the High Elder? Okay. This week I have had some interesting rations besides the vodka I have destroyed. Yep. Yeah, okay. Um. Through consuming it. Yep. Yes. <laughs> Just throwing it at a wall. Oh, yeah. In, in frustration at the world. Yeah. Okay. Like an indie art film. Yeah. But uh, I, I have had some other alcohol. Yep. Uh, particularly Valhalla instructs. You do play with snacks and drinks at hand. Oh, nice. Okay, so a game that promotes drinking. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so I actually have this for a while now. Um, I got it for Christmas and or during the my Christmas vacation and planned on using it for the now canceled X crawl game. I was going to have some friends. Yep. I still have one of those beers which I'm saving, but it's a Trembule Stout. Yeah. Is it from Southern Tier? No. Okay. All right. So. Uh, Crimper laced out. Yes. Go on. Yeah, no, it's from some place in Tennessee, I think. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's delicious. Okay. Yeah, I believe you. I, I've had a, a Crimper laced out before. It was also delicious. Yeah, now I have to make sure it's not from Southern Tier and we're not talking about the same thing. 
I will do that after this podcast. Okay. But it's great, and that is probably the best ration I've had in a while. All right. I have one left, and I got it, you know, in Georgia, so I don't know if I'll ever get it again. Sweet, sweet Georgia. I mean, life is like fine wine. It always ends eventually. <laughs> It can never last forever. You must <laughs> seek out new and different joys. Well, it, in that in that metaphor, I can keep on buying life. Then, yeah, you can. It's Pretty just much. it's just very expensive. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> so that kind of works. How many clones do you have, Kevin? Uh, ninety-eight. How many can you harvest for organs? Um, at least ninety. Uh, the other eight are alcoholic, so that's a little hard. Oh, okay then. Uh, I mean, I'm surprised the percentage isn't higher. Same. Uh, <laughs> All, All right. right, Kevin, tell me about your hobbies this week and your rations. Okay. Um, so for hobbies this week, I've been watching some Japanese films with some friends of mine. We watched something called Pistol Opera. Pistol Opera is a Japanese film where it's about um, a couple of uh, assassins in a guild. Uh, there's the number three assassin, the number two assassin, the number one assassin. It goes like that, basically. The uh, number one assassin killed the number two assassin who is called the Useless Man. So I'm kind of surprised he wasn't killed off earlier, and I'm surprised he's a number two assassin anywhere. Then the number three assassin is a woman called the Stray Cat. And the Stray Cat uh, has a bunch of these scenes where she lounges out on, like, a uh, sofa couch recliner thing with a woman with a mask on. And she, like, does, like, weird things. It's a weird movie that has, like, a guy in a wheelchair that's an assassin that runs down a pier and kills somebody, or okay. tries to. so, look, I'm just saying... And has a girl with a lantern following him. Yeah, that that gets weird. Okay. Um, but I was going to say that, like, if your code name is the Useless Man, mm -hmm. that's a great code name because no one thinks you're an assassin. And if you're in a wheelchair, also no one thinks you're an assassin. That's true. The guy in the wheelchair was called Sensei, though. I don't know why. Maybe he was a teacher. I'm not yeah, sure. I, I'm just saying, if you if you're trying to make like code names or anything, go with something stupid. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, they, Mr. Pink. Like, yeah, yeah, Mr. Yeah. Pink, but like, you know, if you go for something believable that doesn't sound threatening. Okay, I see what you're saying. I, the movie, I. Nurse I, Rhonda, there we go. Nurse Rhonda, yeah, yeah, okay. That's it's uh, like, oh yeah, we're calling Nurse Rhonda. That is not bad. Pastor Green. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, actually, yeah. that sounds kind of intimidating. Well, we're calling Pastor Green. Well, uh, I think Pastor, isn't Pastor Green like a character in Clue? Oh, that's, I thought that was Mr. Green. I think I think it was like Reverend Green or Mr. Green yeah, let me or just look. you keep talking. I'm gonna look yeah, up yeah. whatever Green person that is. Colonel Mustard. Uh, so that movie was very interesting and uh fun. I I would suggest people watch Pistol Opera. It's gonna be very hard to find because it's a rare, obscure Japanese film that my friend found because he collects insane amount of movies. Insane amount of movies. It's uh, Mr. Green. Mr. Green. Okay, I was wrong, but. Uh, another movie I watched as well was this uh, short Japanese horror anthology. I forgot the name of it. If I remember, I'll put it in the description. Um, but it's basically like uh, four different stories, uh, just like kind of interconnecting a little bit together. Um, one of the stories has a uh, called Mr. Caterpillar, where uh, you have this woman who takes in like a war uh, veteran, her husband, uh, who got like terribly scarred. And then she proceeds to cut off all of his limbs and treat it, treats him like a caterpillar man. And it's very weird. Uh, there's another one called, like, Bugs, where this man has, like, OCD, and he keeps on thinking about those kind of uh, bugs crawling on his skin and everything. Um, and it has, like, a great ending that I suggest everyone watch because it's, it's so good. I love the ending so much. But, um, yeah, it's if I remember what this horror anthology is called, I'll tell you guys and put it in the description, but also an obscure Japanese film that's going to be hard to find. So, good luck. And what have you been drinking to numb the pain of these movies, Kevin? Uh, a variety pack of Left Hand Stout. And oh. this came in uh, four different flavors, one I've had before and talked about, which was the peanut butter cup one, mm -hmm. which is the best one. I still think that. Another one is chai, which was, okay, pretty sweet, not bad. Uh, another one is the bitter uh, sweet chocolate, which was stronger and uh, a little bit more bitter than I thought it would be, honestly, considering it was a milk stout. And then uh, last but not least, the fourth one was uh, one I can't remember. So uh, it's probably not that great. Kevin, can you, Raspberry chocolate. can you get your familiar to stop attacking our sound producer? 
Um, I, I would like to, but this is the type of uh, familiar here that does not listen to you very well. So I'll try, but we can see how this goes. Uh, I, I still don't understand why you picked another French Bulldog to be your familiar. I don't think uh, you pick your familiar. I think your familiar picked you, Ted. Oh, I guess that's true. Yeah. I guess you're just a French Bulldog at heart. Uh, you just, uh, I had uh, at least like 10, year, 10 more years to live. Now it's down to five because of that statement, Ted. Well, that, Thank that's you. why you have clones. That's true. Okay. All right. So I'll harvest their organs again. Speaking of beer, um, beer update. Um, at that same time, Kevin gave me that vodka. He gave me uh, a pack of Warhead beer, and we tried a couple. Yeah. I have now tried the rest, and under different conditions. Okay. Uh, and I found out that my favorite of the pack is watermelon. Yeah. And it tastes notably better chilled on ice. Ah, I see. Injury. Interesting. This is something I always feel like people don't appreciate enough. Like, that beer is generally <laughs> served cold, but not on ice. Right. And that's the preserved flavor. But any, like, whiskey drinker knows a few drops of water will change the flavor quite a bit. Yeah. So one second. Sorry. Am I familiar with yet again, Fox? All right. All right. So, beer over ice has a similar effect. Now, Stouts are good. Guinness particularly tastes excellent on ice, but sweeter sour flavors, like particularly super sweet and super sour flavors, have a very different taste on ice. And I found that you get a decent amount of tart candy flavor properly when it's it on ice. Yeah. And then that water makes the flavor kind of just pop out a little bit more. Yeah, I, I'm not entirely sure why. Maybe it's just the extra chilliness as well. Oh, okay. You know, ice does keep things colder longer. Hmm. That makes sense to me. So, um, besides uh, that variety pack of beer, uh, also tried one more thing that I forgot to mention: um, snack pack beer. And this is from that Gardner Ale House. Yes, I've yeah. had this beer. Okay, uh, disappointing and not that great. Agreed, hard agree. I've found uh, most of their beer goes in that category. Yeah, no, um, no mean to throw any shade on you, uh, Gardner Ale House. I like your food. I just don't like your beer. I'm going to throw some shit at you. You changed your menu quite radically. Uh, I haven't been there in a while, so. <laughs> okay, recently they changed their menu, mm-hmm. and it's about one-fifth of what it used to be. Was that uh, pre- or post-pandemic? Or uh, apocalypse, I mean. Uh, I mean, it changed last month. Oh, okay. All right, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> it's, it's been going strong until last month. Mm, okay, fair, fair. Um, That sucks. <laughs> yes, it was very disappointing because I went there two weeks prior and there was one particular thing I wanted to get. I cannot remember what it was right now. It might have been like their loaded nachos or something. Right, right. And that just was gone. Just gone. Just just not there anymore. And, okay. And uh, I like their loaded nachos a lot. So yeah, that sucks. You can, get, you can get them vegetarian. Actually, they're very good at making vegetarian substitutes for things. One thing they do have, and if you're a vegetarian, I highly suggest this. You, uh, you can get their buffalo mac and cheese, but instead of the chicken, it can be buffalo tofu mixed in. Oh, okay. That's an interesting uh, way to play that. It's very good. Nice. Okay. I can dig that. Um, so, really, uh, really quick, before we get into the uh, characters we made for uh, possibly the best anime adaptation ever made, which was Dragon Ball Evolution. And... <laughs> I mean, we didn't make Dragon Ball Evolution characters, Kevin. Um, Kind of. I, I did. You definitely did. Yeah, so... That was, making sure that was a possibility okay. was the, one of the reasons I picked this RPG. Yes, so we, we did do a bit of that. Um, just before we kind of get into that part of this uh, discussion here, um, I do want to say that, uh, yet again, we'll be putting that GoFundMe in the description. Please uh, visit that page uh, if you want to and help support uh, Ted and his uh, family, basically. Yeah, please. Um, no one has contacted me about what religion I should become, but oh, yeah, also yeah. it came out maybe an hour before this moment. Well, doesn't hurt to, this yeah. is not going to come out for a little while. True. So, <laughs> once again, I will get baptized in the religion of anyone's choice for $250 donation. Is is just like first come, first serve, or will you keep first on comes, changing? Um, you can only get baptized once by Trinitarian doctrine. Oh, okay. Okay. So... <clears throat> Uh, after Vatican II, there was a council where they determined that all baptisms were valid. Uh, the only exception is, uh, actually, I guess if someone wants me to become Mormon first, then I can do a second uh, 
baptism because because their god isn't trinitarian in the same way they actually have a pseudo baptism for mormons converting to more traditional christian religions and some would say real yeah (laughs) some would say real kevin would say real Nothing, well, no, never mind. I don't want to talk about that again. (laughs) But because of kind of the interesting thing with the Godhead and everything, instead of, you know, uh, they actually, like, add a one, and if I haven't been uh, baptized in the name of God, I now. Okay. Yeah, all right, I see. Because they're not sure yet. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I. (laughs) (laughs) uh, You know, major religions that, you know, really take this thing seriously are not willing to risk someone's soul on a technicality. That's that's fair. Okay. That's <laughs> now that you say that, this reminds me of like a sports game, just like uh just imagine that it, it's like a football commentator like, I'm not sure how that baptism went, but it seems like he's going full Mormon on this one here, Bob. All right, the Catholic team isn't looking too happy about that. The Mormons are doing something like a sneaky play. They're talking about magic wearing magic underwear again. I don't like how they're doing steroids there, Bob. Like stuff like I that. like how Kevin's sports commentary is from Minnesota. Oh, that's how you know it's a Hoover. So, uh, <laughs> but just... yes. Um, now, so I guess if someone wants more first, now if you're willing to give more, we can talk about. Uh, we can negotiate. If you got for if if you give like three fifty, no, probably like closer to five hundred. I'll go through all the confirmation classes and get confirmed Catholic. I, you know what? <laughs> I would love that. I mean, all of them. I will do it. I will do it freaking. I mean, I can't promise belief, but I will study them like crazy. I will go. <laughs> I will legitimately go through those classes. Full hog. All the effort I possibly can to it. All and, right. You know, if it gets absorbed in and Ted finally becomes something other than a godless heathen, well, then you've saved a soul. Well, we'll be going to the Paramount Dimension, Ted, which, uh, who doesn't like kimchi, who doesn't like <laughs> spicy food, uh, who, like, prays before he goes to sleep every night. And, and eats has, meat. Yeah, and eats meat and has, like, three kids. <laughs> and a divorced wife. Uh, <laughs> that's how you know you're a happy American. Uh, two and a half kids, white picket fence, dog, maybe a cat if you're weird, and then just going from there. Yeah, when I was younger, I was always worried about getting married because, uh, like, re- no, not even this is a more serious than this because I had okay. this weird dream recurring where I became a widower. Oh, uh, that's not a good dream to have. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> no. It, it was like. It was like this weird, like going through a pre midlife crisis because, like, I the love of my life died and I moved like across the country to the Midwest, and I kept having this dream. I had this dream probably like ten times. I I'm thinking maybe this was your parallel self warning you about <laughs> about his uh, about his wife. <laughs> I think maybe <laughs> this is parallel dimension Christian Ted. This is Christian Ted warning you about the uh, your marriage. Yeah. Well, I guess. Ugh, yeah. All right. All right. Well, I'm glad I'm on that dimension. Yeah, I mean, all I'm right. I'm not happy about being in this one, but at least I'm on that one. I mean, of all the millions of dimensions we've crossed, Ted, I'm glad I'm with you in this one. Thanks, Kevin. You're welcome. Let's talk about the game that we played, or made characters in, I should say. Yes, we have not played this, so... We haven't played this because it's a terrible game, by the way. Yes. We tried playing Fate Accelerate, but once again, that got canceled. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so... Should record that, too, by the way, if we actually do do I it. I would be down for that. Okay, awesome. So, Dragon Ball Evolution is a bad spinoff. I think we can all agree with that. Um, hard to disagree, but sure. Okay. Kevin is being contrarian for a reason. Anyways, this is another bad spinoff. Now, there are fan bay made, not made, uh, made <laughs> Dragon Ball Z RPGs. Yeah. They're okay-ish, but I'm trying to stay away from the fan made stuff. Right, right. I, if we're going to talk about things, good or bad, I want it to be where people honestly thought these were going to make money. Yeah, where, where there was an intention to profit. <laughs> right. Because if you're making a Dragon Ball RPG, it's probably a you know a labor of love. Yeah. But also, you're not going to hire an art team or play testers besides a few friends. Yeah, yeah. It's it's going to be uh, not going to be triple A quality. No, it... I mean, it might be. Who knows? Some AAA are just god awful. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's it's an indie game. Right. Right. That has with it the plus and minuses. So I want I want with something AAA. Mm, yes, you did. So Exodus was originally Fallout pen and paper role playing game before a last minute disagreement had them lose the license and have to change everything. Now this is a game I used to own a hard copy of. 
it fell apart. Mm. It was... Because quality was so good. Oh, God. It was... Even when I first opened the book, it was the kind of traditional palladium-style books, you know, yeah. soft back, but certain pages, like the blue just stuck in weird ways. So, like, a, a group of 30 would would be kind of together as a book, and there'd just be a hard split, which caused the binding to break. Yeah, okay. That's fair. All right. And <laughs> the PDF I got of this is not the original. It is version 1.5. So an improvement over the uh, original there, right? Yes. Because there's no longer just massive spelling errors or leftover fallout words. Because uh, they had to change all that. So, for example, yeah. there was there's a drug called Jet. Yeah. Which they changed like Turbo or something in this. Okay, and that's like to get your AP or yeah, whatever. Yeah, makes it quicker. Action remember, points. It, there was just a line that said Turbo. Or not Turbo, uh, Jet in the original. Like, okay. There's just several times where they messed it up. And even then, the artwork is still not Vault Boy. What would you call him? Like, uh, let, let's come up with like a term. Shelter boy. Shelter boy. They shelter use the man. Term shelter. Okay. Shelterman. I like that. Shel- yeah, shelterman. And they also use the term Chinaman, by the way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. Look, the other thing about this game. Slightly racist. Yeah. Um. So it's moral. I don't even know where to go for this. Uh, uh, yeah, I guess yeah, I'm yeah. gonna start the plot of the game. Yeah. Let's start with the plot. All right. So it's set in California, like the original Fallout games, the one yeah. and two. Yeah. And it's 20 years after their nuclear apocalypse. War never changes. Yeah, like Fallout 1. Yeah. And it's kind of goes from California to Las Vegas. There's even some later books that are set in Las Vegas and the Vegas Mafia is a thing. Okay, nice. Yep. However... Mafia never changes. <laughs> however, besides the traditional, you know, weird techno cult that's based on the United States military... Okay. I, I would worship a tank, I guess. Yeah, I mean, closer to the god than most things. Uh... Okay. <laughs> Maybe that's the religion we convert you to, is Technomancer. Be close to that than most things. Okay, fair enough. And, you know, the, the Brotherhood of the Apocalypse, and uh, Apollos of the Apocalypse, are just, or they're called the Savior's Army. They're still there. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's kind of something based on the uh, Church of Adam. Yeah, okay. However, there was a Chinese guy who, in San Francisco... Jackie Chan. Yeah. No name. <laughs> But he has a vision yeah. of the great sky dragon breathing fire down the land. Okay. Where he brings 300 of his Chinese followers into a fallout shelter beneath the city of San Francisco's Chinatown. Right, of course. As you do. And when they emerged, there was more of them. And there's a little over a thousand now because that's a lot in this world. Yeah. And they now have a feudal society. Okay. In San Francisco. Okay, so the, when you say feudal, there's like peasants and there's like... It does not working. go into detail. I'm oh, okay. S- I'm, given how this game is, I'm assuming in some expansion, which there are now, which shocks me. Okay. <laughs> there's probably some emperor. I Yeah, I would think so. Like some sort of sun or dragon emperor yeah, who resides over San Francisco. It, 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 it has to be something like that. Yeah, and sits upon his tower. It says tower. it's a feudal society, which... Whatever that's and supposed whatever to mean. Whatever that's supposed to be. There's, there's a lot of different feudal societies, so that's hard to... I, I would assume Chinese. Yeah, I'm not, I am not. I don't know what era means even just saying Chinese is uh, kind of... Yeah, it's kind of like you're open to a lot of interpretation. Right, it's like, okay, is this like hardcore Confucian? Who knows? Yeah. I, I'm more familiar with like Japanese feudal, so I don't know too much about Chinese feudal. Yeah, well, Chinese feudal gets very complicated because really there's like... China's like... Even like what we think of as proper China, not including Tibet or anything, is like five countries that are all like conglomerated together. Yeah, and they keep over history uniting and dividing. Uh, the one interesting thing is they're pretty much all the same people. Right. Right. Okay. Like it's 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 one race of people, which makes it interesting because they're traditionally divided and kind of go back and forth between multiple nation states. Yeah. Okay. And then. It just keeps on breaking apart, reforming, breaking apart, reforming. Yeah. Sort of like, uh, I would say that's sort of almost like the Greeks with like... Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, the, the parallels are right there, but yeah. on a much larger scale. Yeah, because it's huge. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Okay, agreed. Um, uh, you can also actually a lot of things. You get Italy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah actually, there's a lot of parallels Japan. there. Yeah, Japan also. Okay, basically every early civilization. Yeah, okay, right, right, right. Well, I don't know about uh, Spain, really. I mean, Spain, France, those are more... Actually, England? 
uh, okay, you know, England's there. I think England, I mean, England's four different areas, countries, but they're still distinct. Yeah, they're still very distinct. So there, there's. And, I mean, uh, it's been conquered down to the Celtic Union, but still. Yeah, well, <laughs> go Ireland. Go uh, Ireland. Go <laughs> Scotland. And you know what? Good on you, Wales. Good on you, Wales. Finally, you're a country again. Finally. All right. <laughs> and one that matters. Yeah, and stop complaining about it, all right? We get it. <laughs> the dragons on the new flag. Deal with it. Yeah, dra- okay. And then the unicorns on the Scottish flag. Just because that's their national animal. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, me too. And unicorns now exist, so that's also great. Yeah, I mean, it must have been kind of a weird day when suddenly the Scottish cavalry came in riding unicorns. I know, and you know what? Uh, those tanks didn't stand a chance. Uh, unicorn horns can pierce any material, apparently. See Dresden Files for more details. Yep, see Dresden Files for more details. But, you, Don't buy a unicorn dildo. Do no, do not do that. <laughs> um, I just remember the, what was it, double barrel unicorn special from the Adventure Zone. Oh, God. <laughs> yes. It's a deep fried unicorn horn and penis. <laughs> That's uh, uh, I mean, can you can you not see it if you're not a virgin? Like I don't, like, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, this is just like a fried coating that just floats in the air. Like I don't know how that works. Yeah, I guess you'd be able to see the batter. I guess yeah, you'd see the you'd see the it, it's like Invisible Man. You'd see the clothes on him, but you wouldn't see like the Invisible Man's flesh. Same thing with the yeah. unicorn penis. Yeah, weirdly enough, uh, this exact kind of issue came up in Valhalla last night. Oh, really? Yeah, there's. There's one person they serve at the bar who's an android, but more particularly, she's a prostitute. Okay, right. And she tried to actually get a um, thing to like, change the nanites in her body to deflect color so she would appear invisible, except oh. for her clothes. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. It, it's apparently, she she deals with kind of fetishy, niche clientele quite a bit. That, that's pretty niche, yeah. And apparently that's the one in the future. I mean, currently, step sibling porn is the big one in our world so uh, frankly invisible person stripping honestly might be the more wholesome alternative i i saw something on um tiktok that i thought was really funny and it was a uh it was like an acting read right so uh it was this girl saying like okay i'm gonna read a line from one of my favorite movies and try to present it to you guys here and then she said uh what are you doing step bro why are you acting so weird <laughs> It was obviously like a parody, but yeah, I, I got uh, yeah, that, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, it's so it's so funny to me. Game of Thrones has ruined our culture. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, I'll agree with that. I mean, I, I think also anime has ruined our culture because that's also a huge thing in anime for yeah, some reason. Is. Whether it's like cousins or whatever, <laughs> but so all weird, all weird, no good. Yeah. Coming from massive anime fans, that's kind of re- it's kind of hypocritical, but at the same time, yeah, that's always kind of weird me out. Yeah, uh, okay. Uh, okay, let's check out Elf and Lead for more info there. Or don't. Yeah, or don't, whatever. Um, yeah, Ted, let's go back to this terrible game. Um, yeah. It's called Exodus, by the way. Yeah, Exodus. Yeah. So a, China, a Chinese man yeah, it says, <laughs> foretold the future. It, it flat out says the Chinese, parentheses, or, or China men. <laughs> yeah, I, that's very interesting on several levels. That wouldn't fly today. No. <laughs> no. When when orcs are treated like how they are right now, that would not fly today. <laughs> it's really weird. Yeah, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, I agree. Don't worry. There's some. It, you, it, honestly, if you're gonna be anything, this game Chinese is probably a good uh, idea. But we'll talk about that in a moment. Yeah, yeah. You know, Chinese very strong class. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, Caucasian the, pretty weak. <laughs> the problem is, I mean, it's actually a background not a class Kevin. i know i know i know it's a prerequisite for some classes for or, some prestige classes or, yeah or no, i'll talk about that in a moment yeah okay you, if you work really hard it could almost seem like you're chinese <laughs> that's true <laughs> all right dad so besides that <laughs> besides that uh so the apocalypse came and anyone who knows about fallout knows there are things called super mutants which are these you know, kind of meat-headed, big guys ma- uh, made from a special virus. Yeah. These are called transgenic mutants now. now is, does that have any, like, special meaning, or is it just, like, transgenic means, like... Transgenetic. Uh, okay, that's it. Yeah, yeah all right. Different, they've changed their genes to a different Okay. Species. That's it. I would call them green bean giants or something. <laughs> Literally, there's so many better names than that. Yeah, okay. Shreks. Oh, and then it could be the Shrekenites. <laughs> yeah. I mean, 
they're already green and big. Yeah. And they have areas, kind of an army. They do not want you to go in their swamp. Yeah. Probably because it's their source of water. Yeah. <laughs> well, there we go. And they, they, they need that to grow. So, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Uh, ghouls are there, too. But they have to spell them differently. Because, according to them, it comes from the Arabic word. So, it's G-H-U with an umlaut. Yeah, L. I was going to say umlaut. It's very important that you have that umlaut. Otherwise, you get sued. Yeah, it's legally distinct entity. Yeah, but you can have jet, though. So, whatever. <laughs> or you can leave that mistake in. Oh, they, oh, they, they changed that in the 1.5. They changed all the mistakes in 1.5. Yeah, but except, releasing something yeah, with that oh, is no, not is, good. Like I said, the first book was just uh, a dumpster fire, I think is a good term. Just like 2020. Oh, God, I missed that year. Uh, <laughs> I never thought uh, I'd say it. So, uh, oh, man, I'd go back to 2020 in a heartbeat right now. That is sad. That is very sad. Legitimately, without question, so, if someone... Can, if a GD came up and said, hey, would you like to repeat 2020 in a Groundhog Day? I would say, yes, yes, God, yes. I can imagine you in a Bill Murray-esque role. <laughs> you look a little bit like Bill Murray right I, now, I'll take actually. That, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, so, so this game, you make, uh, you make your follow characters. You make your bed and you lie in it. Yeah. So the first thing you pick is your species. Yeah. One of those three. And then you pick your origin. Now, certain origins are... Uh, restricted to species. For example, you cannot be a chai descendant and a ghoul because that would imply that you're out in the radiation instead of learning from your prophet. Well, yeah, but not every... I don't I don't assume that every Chinese person has to follow the same religion and or prophet, though. Yeah, but it's chai I, descendant. Okay. It's, so chai descendant so it's is specifically a, a chai descendant. Yeah, okay. you have to, chai descendant is it? I guess... If you're Chinese outside of that, you weren't part of the shelter or the community. Yeah, so then you would be okay, but you can. So you can't be you can't be Chinese because every every Chai descendant has to be Chinese. Yes, but you so, can't be a Chinese person that is not a Chai descendant. Okay, so okay, all right. I'm I'm starting to get it. All yes. right, good, good. That being said, uh, when you pick your uh your origin, Chai descendant is probably the best one. Oh, uh, yeah, so yeah, definitely these is. origins are. Not balanced at all. No, some why would just, they be? Some give you free feats, which, by the way, this is an OGL game. Yeah. So it uses the exact same system as 3.5. Yeah. With a few changes. You know, there's computer skills in this one. But feats are life in these games. Oh, what? Your rogue feet. doesn't have computer skills in old no, Dungeons yeah. & Dragons? Exactly. <laughs> feats are life. And the fact that you just get extra feats and traits and everything yeah. right off the gate from certain origins is just game-breaking. Also stupid. Yes, but you can do everything from you were raised in a religious community or you're a city slicker. Yeah. Or you live down the country, all that jazz. You're, or you're a uh, wise guy? Wise guy was the profession. Oh, profession, sorry. You're right. Yeah, or if you pick a uh, ghoul, you could be a radiant one. So it's, you just glow. Oh, ah, yeah. Yeah, that comes up later. Or you can be part of the um, super, I'm sorry, transgenic mutant army. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Why are you rocking with some humans? I got no idea. Yeah, no but, idea. Well, yeah. you poor remember, this is how you were up for Ah, uh, yes, yes. Okay, true. Then you get to pick what job you have. And these are, once again, not balanced. Yep. So these determine your extra skills you get, maybe an extra feat, and how much money you have. Money. Money. And the money in this game is interesting because the coins are not bottle caps. Yeah. They oh, are yeah. steel coins. And any penny, not a penny, a nickel, dime, or quarter, or I guess half dollar, or dollar for that matter, coin if you find those, yeah, are all worth the same amount. Yep. A penny is worth one hundredth of any of those. Okay. Yep. All right. A proper silver coin is worth fifty, and a gold coin is worth a hundred. Yep. All right. And that's the currency system, which I enjoy for the simplicity. Yeah. So, well, yeah, no, I agree. That's that's simple enough, and it's based on something that's actually real and kind of understandably tangible. Yes. Also. There's this one little line in the book, which I think is hilarious, because it talks about how there is no real current thought on how finding additional coins will cause inflation, or how eventually these will go out of circulation as they slowly get destroyed and eroded. Yeah. Oh, okay. I just thought, like, yeah, I'm sure no one's thinking about that right now. Yeah, yeah, for obvious reasons. <laughs> That's... Yeah, yeah. But it's sort of like Bitcoin mining because you can literally go out and just find a piggy bank and suddenly you know you strike gold. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, it's that's kind of that's kind of interesting there. I like that. Yeah, it it does sort of make scavenging, scavenging, yeah, 
a little bit more profitable when literally finding money is a thing. Yeah, no, yeah. I agree. Once again, it reminds me of Bitcoin mining, but unlike Bitcoin mining, salvaging can also do things in Corbin. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> uh, Kevin, if we have time after this, I'll go on a rant about Bitcoin mining because I, re- I recently did a deep dive into the algorithms they work, you know, that yeah. work and how the I always heard like it used to solve a math problem, and that's who determines what uh, who uh, makes the next blockchain and gets the extra Bitcoin. Right. It's not though. Oh. It's not solving a math problem. Okay. Is it? Oh, I, we can talk about this yeah, in a little bit. It bugs me. Yeah. Uh, okay. At, so when you're picking your occupation. Yeah. After that, you get to pick your class, and there are two, maybe three classes in this game, and they suck. Yep. They are the base classes are just stupid. Yeah. One is offensive and the other one is defensive, which are awful names. It should be like combat and skill focused. Yeah. Yeah. Like that would be that would be much better and less yeah. like sports or football exactly. or something. Exactly. If you're playing the combat focused, you get a base attack bonus. Anyone who knows OGL games in general, 3.5 D20 system, knows what this is. You know, it's kind of, it goes up with your level. And you get more HP, but you're not good at defending yourself. You get a little bit of less defense bonus, and your saving throws are worse. Yeah. Compared to the skill-based one, where you get less to hit, less hit points, a bit more defense, and a lot of skills. Yeah. A lot more. Like, I had 12 points to Kevin's four. Yeah. Yeah. That's also because my intelligence was not great. Yeah, but my intelligence was, I think, lower. Yeah, yours was like a seven or something. Yes. Yeah. Okay. True. True. You know what? Fair enough, Ted. Um. But yeah, we have like those two base classes that you have to yeah. pick. You can make a custom one where it kind of combines the two levels to level. It's god awful and super confusing. Okay. And we didn't yeah. want to deal with that. Yeah. And as you level up, you can take prestige classes. Yes. And the prestige classes are actually where the game shines. Yeah, because they're pretty interesting, I think. Or at yeah. least some of them are. If I was going to play this game, I'd probably have to start at level 5 or 6. Um, actually, with the tag skill system, because it is, like, Fallout, you can add your, uh, pick a few skills to be a little bit better. Yeah. You still have to put the points in, but the max is higher. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. You could reach some of the prestige classes very early. Like, I think for the martial artist, if you're Chinese, you can be there at level 3. Yes, yes. That's why starting off as, like, a Chai descent, it's so good. Yeah, uh... There are just, it's one or two classes, I also forget, like the prestige class, one's martial artist, and the other one, I, I don't know if Weapon Master has this, or if it just has a prerequisite you automatically get if you're Chinese. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. But, like, for martial artist, it's either, you get these three talents, which talents are a skill tree, you get every other level that's like the feature feat system, yeah. but just completely separate for no reason. Yeah. And you either have to get a bunch of them, like... I want to say it's like six in total. Yeah, yeah. I think I or do believe it's that. Or be Chinese. Or or yeah. Or just be lucky and be Chinese, basically. <laughs> and in case you're wondering, yes, um, it does have uh, Bruce Lee as a like clearly legally distinct person next to that. Well, that uh, that's not Bruce Lee. That's a uh, brick <laughs> brick C. There we go, brick C. Yes. <laughs> that's legally distinct. And just looks like the same pose and has like a dragon tattoo on him to reference his movies that he was not in. Exactly. Right. <laughs> now, some of the classes, the pursuit classes are very good and interesting. There is one like kind of deep cut for Fallout fans where you can play a ghoul that's drug fruit. Yeah. Uh, yes. You that can, was a cool one. Yeah. Uh, you can really <laughs> just be a charlatan, you know, master merchant. You know, there's a lot of role play prestige classes. Honestly, if they just made these prestige classes the classes. That would make a lot more sense, I think. Yeah, yeah, it would be way better. Yeah. Yeah, that would be also... Uh, I, 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 This game is weird, just to, just to say that in general, and also not very good. So, now, why do you yeah. think it's weird, Kevin? I, I, Besides the fact that the Chinese master race is a very real thing in this game. <laughs> Alex Jones would have a field day on this one. They're trying to take over the whole entire America, trying to take over California. They already got San Francisco locked down. <laughs> The Chai descendants are trying to poison the water. Like, yeah. Um, really enough, they're probably the best people at filtering water because uh, they well, have so yeah. much infrastructure in yeah. an actual society. <laughs> <laughs> True. True. Um, I just think this game is uh, a little bit weird just because the the basis for it is good. Like, uh, Because if you like Fallout, you're going to like some aspects of this. But 
the uh, way they implement some of these things is just kind of clunky and not very good or yes, smart. Yes, agreed. Like, it is very unbalanced completely. Yeah. Um, now, we talked about starting money. Yes, now, that is that was a fun experience. Now, interestingly enough, none of the backgrounds or anything start with any equipment. Right, so... Which is interesting, because yeah. I would have thought, you know, if you're a, let's say, cattle wrangler for your entire life, yeah, you might have a six-shooter and a lasso. Yeah, something to do that job that you yeah, have. maybe a horse yeah maybe uh, maybe some uh, sort of i don't know leather or something i don't know yeah no you start with i think a hundred coins of that one yeah now i my character started with 400 coins which is the highest of any starting uh career and well I, said uh do you know why you start out with so many coins because i was a prostitute yeah because you're we'll, a whore we'll talk to, which <laughs> is not the meaning of dilettante which also bugs me yeah okay did well, you look this up later? No, I knew what that dilettante meant. Oh, okay, gotcha. Um, actually, dilettante was interesting enough an occupation you could have in Traveler. If you, if you oh, know. really? <laughs> dilettante means like a rich person, particularly a noble, that just kind of goes around to different estates and parties and everything. Oh, so it's it's not what they portray it in this it's at all. It's not high end prostitute. That's escort. Uh, okay, yeah. I wonder if like they had some sort of like thing where it's like, okay, we can't call them an escort. We have to go with, like, this term? Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. Dilettante is a decent term for it, but it wasn't yeah. what I thought it was when I first looked at it. I thought it was debutante for a little bit, but that's completely different. No, that's... They, they are related. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, they're both kind of terms, you know, to you know, be brought into society for being a member and focused on the society as a whole. Okay, gotcha. All right. Um, if anyone yeah. wants to know, if you're if you're ever read a Jane Austen book, mm. Dilettante, if you... <laughs> If you've ever watched Downton Abbey, Dilettantes. That's a good way to describe it. Yeah, very simple, too. So if you ever seen those or anything. Yes. Jerry, what are you doing? Uh, that's not Jerry. I think oh, that's Ellie Blue. Ellie, what are you doing? Kevin, control your familiar. Okay, I'll try. I, I put I put them upstairs, but somehow they escaped. All right, I'm, gonna let you... I'm sorry about that. Kevin Prime has decided to dabble in magic. And uh, as, is, magic as is tradition, um... Every one of his family has a French Bulldog. That's part of their soul. So, anyways, this game uses the exact normal uh, D20 system. If you're listening to this, you probably know what that is. And if you don't, go look it up. Uh, there's better games for it. All right. I'm back. Ellie Blue is behind a force field of my own making. Excellent. Let's go back to money. Okay. 400 coins. The max you can start with is nothing. I have armor, a gun, some clothes, and 10 bullets. Yeah. That's it. I could not afford both the cheapest firearm and food. I literally had to remove having a coat so I could shoot something. Yeah, and uh, I only had 50 coins to start off with. Um, here's what I bought with my 50 coins. Um, a burlap sack, because a backpack was 100 coins. Um, <laughs> hey, uh, some duct tape, uh, a coat, <laughs> and some casual clothing. Now, I still maintain he should have just made a sumo thong made of duct tape. I, I was thinking of taking that off, and I was thinking of the repercussions of that. And I might not be living as that character, but I don't want to make that character go through that. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, even though I hate this character I made. So Why do you hate him? Because I don't like the movie he's based off. Okay, let's talk about our characters. Yeah. So, Kevin, what character did you make? Uh, Giku. Okay. And that's based on... Goku from the movie. That was yeah. the name that they called him. Yep, yeah, that was the name his bullies called him as a uh, insult. Uh, I was thinking about making Piccolo, but I also thought about that for more than like five seconds. I could make him like a giant mutant guy, but yeah, that would have been cool. That been cool. Uh, I almost kind of wish you did that so we could have uh, Giku and Piccolo. Yeah, no, no, I made Fallout Boy. Yeah, you made Fallout Boy again. <laughs> my my um, Jersey Shore ghoul from last episode we made characters and since this is based in california i'm guessing he just moved from the jersey shore to california i mean i'm assuming he went was there for like some media tie-in oh yeah okay okay yeah yeah and refused to evacuate when the air horn said there was an attack yeah okay and just insisted that they keep filming you know what i you know what i like to imagine is that uh like he, he didn't know about the air horns going off uh he just got stuck inside of his like tanning bed so he was just like, the reason why he looks like a ghoul is not because of radiation, but just the tanning. <laughs> That's why he looks so like, uh, just so different from how he used to look. <laughs> yep, that's awesome, Kevin. All right. 
Yeah. Those okay. Things, those things are at least partially radioactive. Yeah, they have to be. Whatever. We'll we'll just take that. They are in the Fallout universe. I'm sorry, the Exodus universe. <laughs> so it could be radioactive. All right. I All like right. it. So I mean a. Defensive class, you have made a offensive class. But we rolled for stats, and they give you the standard ways to roll. And we rolled fairly well. Yeah, um, yes, we both rolled, uh, I would say, at least like kind of above average. Yeah, though we did do 46 drop the lowest. Yeah. Um, so I honestly, yeah. like, I probably rolled about average with that. Yeah, same here. Like, I, I think I did pretty well. But... All right, so classes, uh, not classes, stats are standard. Strength, dexterity, constitution. Intelligence, wisdom, charisma. If you don't know what those do, strength is crushing a tomato. Dexterity is throwing and dodging a tomato. Constitution is eating a raw tomato without puking. Intelligence is knowing tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is knowing not to make a tomato-based fruit salad. Charisma is convincing someone else to do it. Ah, uh, you had that ready and lined up there, Ted. Nice. Uh, I use that for my students. Okay, smart. I like that a lot. Um, so, well, let's go along with um, also our backgrounds here. So, you're a... You're a you're a ghoul. That's yes, uh, <laughs> an so, unfortunate soul. Yeah. So I, for my background, I pick city slicker. Okay, makes sense. The shore. Makes sense. And then my uh, occupation was dilettante, which I thought meant you know just partier, but turns out he's a high end prostitute. Uh, I also cater to a very niche crowd. Yeah, you. Uh, you we, you want to uh, really see those rippling muscles. Well, one, meh, uh, one <laughs> that yeah okay um one of the. And one of the things, too, is uh, you can pick a uh, form of entertainment that you do as a dilettante. Yeah, well, and it's a skill. A skill, sorry. So I, you yeah. get the form of skill, and mine is dancing. Yeah, which makes sense to me. That makes total, complete sense. Not musically talented or anything else, but good no. at dancing. Uh, now, you also have to pick three of your skills to be your tag skills. Yeah. Mine are perform dance, computers, because, you know, I'm still a mildly successful influencer. Mildly. And gambling. Yeah. Because that's something also influencers do. <laughs> right. Now, Kevin, tell me about Giku. Okay, Giku was born as a feral child. He landed on this planet from an asteroid going to Earth and just managed to survive the fallout because it was post uh, that. But Feral child is actually one of the more interesting backgrounds. Yeah. Um, you, get, uh, you get a good amount of skills along with uh, being illiterate. Yeah, um, it increases like... It's like the one that increases your attributes. I think it was a, it was a remarkably powerful. But you are illiterate. So yeah, yeah. There is that. You are quite literally the barbarian of this. Yep. Which is about right if you're raised yourself in the w woods by you know going up to wolves and stealing their milk and such. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, I did have a grandpa for a little while. Uh, he unfortunately died from a super mutant crushing his head in. Um, and, uh, after that, I became an outcast, because I had nowhere to go. Outcast is one of the two worst occupations. Yeah, it's, it sucks, but... In fact, it might just be the worst, because the other one at least gives you complete... Uh, the other one, no occupation, lets you just pick skills at random, like yeah. whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. Outcast gives you a list. Yeah, and you have to pick that specifically. But, um, I got balance, climb, uh, survival... Which is, I think, a good thing for a feral child to have. Yes. Um, and uh, I believe also Hyde was another one. Yeah. So he got quite a bit. Um, now your tag skills look like they're survival, climb, and I'm assuming balance. Yeah, balance was also the other All one. All right. Yeah. So those are the three that you really want to focus on. Yeah. Which is good because balance is needed for the martial artist class. Yeah, which is good. Now we also start with feats and talents. Yes. So. Uh, everyone starts with one feat unless you're a transgenic mutant, then you get two, or your background says you get one. Yep. Um, you also get a talent, which is basically the same thing, but in a different system for no apparent reason. Right. So, um, I did, um, ex, uh, sorry, action surge, heroic surge for yep. mine, so once a day I get to leap into action because I always have to be in the spotlight. But my talent is damage resistance because I am a ghoul and I do not feel that much pain. Yep. So, you, I can just get shot and go, oh, okay. I'm good. Yep. Kevin, yeah, what'd you pick? Uh, toughness, because I'm tough. That's about it. So, there's that. All right. Now, there is one thing interesting in this system. Yeah. Besides the talents, the feats are traits, and traits are the Fallout-style traits, which I think they did well in this, because they have a very specialized upside. Yes, they do. And yes. a kind of general downside. 
Um, I, <laughs> there, there's also ones that are just like fun. So, yeah, well, yeah, this is probably the best of this RPG, if I had to say. Yep. It really, it really encapsulates something in Fallout, and they do it very well. And some of the traits are unique to this game, but still work. Kevin, yep. what what did you pick? I know one of them, but I don't remember the other. Um, I picked the, uh, I believe it was called Bloody End. Yeah, Bloody End is based on the Bloody Mess perk in the Fallout games that just causes anyone you kill to explode in gore and gives you a 5% damage boost. This doesn't give you the 5% damage boost, but does cause anyone that dies within 60 feet of you to basically explode into hamburger. Yeah, it was really traumatizing when my grandpa died like that, but... I will get through it, and I will punch the thing that punched him to make it explode. Yes, interesting enough, it does not matter how they die. Yeah, exactly. So I could just literally uh, pick him with a pin, and it'll explode. Yeah, if it's it just, just like... causes that. Yeah, or shoot him with like a bow and arrow, and it'll explode. Oh God! Oh Kevin, like they... what if someone like dies of dysentery near you? Oh, and they just explode. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, what if someone has like uh, the flu? <laughs> it just goes oh. over kind of uh, poorly. Oh. They're in their bed and just explode into like a bloody. If I'm in a hospital, that's got to be the worst. Yeah. Yeah. But the custodial staff must hate you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but the worst part is it's 60 feet, so it could be like four floors up. Yeah, it could be. It's 60. It's like, okay. Uh, that is that is awesome. If I'm on like a battlefield, it's, uh, it's sort of like the crows will feast. Yes. <laughs> Kevin, did you pick a second trait? Um, yes, physically fit. Okay, what's that give you? Uh, gave me a plus two strength, and gave me a plus two dexterity, and then a minus two intelligence, and also wisdom. Yes, he's too busy um, doing crunches and squats to study. Yeah, yeah, basically. Uh, yeah, I think that works out well. Yeah. Now, I as well picked two. Um, one, which I think is just excellent, is um, ex- extreme personality. Yeah. Which gave me an extra point of charisma. That it did, as well as... But it doubles my infamy whenever I get that, which is a system in this game where you get percent of fame and infamy from every faction you interact with. Yes. So yes. I'm just incredibly memorable. Yep. I, yeah, definitely. <laughs> what was the... Did you get the other one? Uh, what other one did you get? I got Night Person. Oh, oh, yeah. And uh, the reasoning we came up for that is because you're always hung over. Yeah, so I... Uh, it gives me low light vision and pluses to spot checks at night and dim lighting, that sort of thing. But in daylight, I have minus one to attack, which is kind of brutal. Yeah, it's almost like you're a drow. Yeah, it's pretty much, well, not really, because the other ones were, that was way brutal. Right? Yeah. Actually, in every edition, it's been way brutal as a drow. Drow have kind of always sucked in the daylight. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's very true. <laughs> they always suck in, like, that morning sun. They really do. Don't play a drow, people. Unless, but, unless you're just playing in the Underdark, really. You have to be playing a drow campaign. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't just be the one drow. Yeah. I would rather be one of those fish people than a drow. Yeah, there's a lot of better fish than fish. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's true. Let's pick a mole person. Um, so we had that going on, and then um, I think the final thing was basically our... Uh, was that the inventory, or we already kind of went over that? We kind of already went over inventory. We pretty much said everything about these characters. We picked oh. Cats, picked tri- Trades. Karma points. Karma points. Karma are interesting. Yes. You get three and a half per level. Yeah. And three and a half. Three and a half. So it actually goes up every time you get a half, it increases the amount. Oh, okay. So level one, you get three and a half. Round down to three. Gotcha. But you still have three and a half. So to get to level two, you have seven. Oh, all right, cool. They refresh whenever you level up. Hmm. Okay. Understood. And they let you. They're advantages. They let you re-roll a roll. Yeah. But um, you. <laughs> The way they replenish is almost is only oh after you level up. Yes, there yeah. is no you did something cool role play wise. Here's a karma point. No, no, this actually worked better in a system run by Ben because he's so stingy with those anyway. Yes, so might as well as get that like free, and then when you level up, you get them. That would be way better. Yeah, yeah. Um, another big thing too is uh, another one of the traits uh, was Jinx. Yes, Jinx. I love Jinx. So Jinx, and Lucky. Yeah, Jinx is awful. Yeah. Um. And it says that... It's almost like it's made for a Dark Souls character, really. Yeah, basically. If you want to play in hard mode, whenever... Uh, Depraved. Whenever, yeah. Whenever, like, a nat 1 is rolled, you have to roll in this Jinx table unless you spend a karma point to prevent it. But it applies to everyone within 60 feet of you. Yeah, it's sort of like the bloody end thing, but in terms of luck and 
survival is going down on that, basically. Yes. And you also only get luck points on odd levels, which are not luck points, harm points. So they you get them half as often. Yep. And you have to spend them way more. Yep. Now, why would anyone take this one? It's hilarious, too. There's another one called Lucky, where you get an extra um, karma point. But if you ever run out, you then become jinxed, which I think is excellent because you are super lucky, and then it all runs out all at once. Yeah, which is awesome. So I love that. Yeah, no, that is a nice touch. Yeah. No, exactly. Uh, so that's that's some uh, that's some of the stuff that was really fun and interesting about this game. But Ted, before we have our discussion that we were going to have, uh, a about Bitcoin and b about uh, what's the book called? Tosh's Cauldron of Everything. Yes. Uh, what would you uh, rate this out of? Let me think. Okay. Out of uh, seven uh, copyright infringements, how how many uh, would you rate this? Three. Three? It's it's not terrible at getting some of the stuff right. Yeah. Um, and don't get me wrong, it's not balanced at all. Right. Okay. Yeah. I've seen worse games based on the D20 system. All right. Which I still haven't played, so we'll see how no, this goes. This isn't terribly offensive to my um, sensibilities, if you will. Okay. Fair. There are just blatant problems with power and how the money works, the fact that the classes and early characters are just so boring. Yeah. Like, you'd have to start this at, like, level five to have interesting characters. Right. No, I agree. And yeah. if they just set the work of putting the prestige classes as the base classes, it would have been way more interesting, because then mm. you would be starting instead of, you know, as this random wasteland under 1.2, oh, no, I'm a desert ranger. Oh, I'm a flat, flat prize fighter. Okay, yeah. I thought you were going to say flat earther for a second. No. <laughs> I'm a rigger. It could really. Um, I'm Chinese. But they say, <laughs> <laughs> you really want to be Chinese in this game. Yeah, like, and then there's a subclass of Japanese. <laughs> like you, the amount you get, not only do you get decent skills and everything, but you get either defensive martial arts or the dodge feat at level one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Both of which are really good. Yeah. No, it's great. It's great to be. Yeah. It's great to be Chinese. Yeah. Dodge is just plus one to defense, which. Normally, in most um, OGL games, wouldn't be that big, but the power level in this is lower, and that matters more. Yeah. Also, it still is a prerequisite for a lot of the good stuff. Right. So and just getting that right out of the gate is really good. Yeah. I mean, um, I would personally give this same score as you. Uh, <laughs> three out of uh, seven copyright strikes. Yeah, three out of seven copyright strikes <laughs> or uh, D DCMAs or whatever those uh, whatever that term is like uh, cease and desist. But, um, yeah, uh, same kind of reasoning. I think the uh, power level is kind of a little bit off on some of these things. It's And also, the money really sucks. That, that really kind you of... really start with nothing. That ticked me off. I didn't know, like, everything would be costing a backpack is 100 coins. Yeah, you start with 50. Yeah. Like, if you pick one of the poorer ones, you start with 50. You cannot afford a backpack or a weapon. And you don't get anything from your background or any, well, any of those yeah. kind of classes, now, things. Yeah. Seven here took the uh, the uh, trait Brawler for his first level trait, which lets him do, what, D4s or D6s with his fist? Um, yeah, it's uh, D4s with the fist. Yeah, which gives him an option. Yeah. I deal twice that with my gun, but I have ten shots. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we have ten shots. Yeah, I'm not it's... good at hitting, I'm worse during the day. <laughs> Suns in your eyes, you can't see. But uh, the, the interesting thing too is though, uh, what you said immediately afterwards. If we just find like a raider or some like tribesman or maybe even a China guy, but if we find somebody like that and just steal all their stuff, we automatically are like ten times better than when we started. Oh yeah, if you like NPCs don't have luck points. Yeah. So if you're going to blow a couple of your luck points on the first like raider you find, and suddenly you have a shotgun. Yeah, and then you can do like exponentially more damage, and you can, you have so much uh, higher survival rate. Yeah, so it's yeah. like, oh, here's your backpack, Kevin. <laughs> I'm gonna sell this and make a fortune. <laughs> sell for ninety caps, or uh, sorry, coins. Um, so after we talked about uh Exodus and made some characters in it, um, Ted brought up something kind of interesting. And uh, I know we've been joking uh, a lot about, like, the Chinese uh, comment there, the Chai descendant. I'm still not sure if this is a joke. Those are by far the best race in this game. No, it was. But it, it feels like uh, some people have been reacting to this uh, book 
in a similar way we kind of reacted to the Chai Descendant. So let's talk about that just for a little bit. Yes. Yeah, so in Tantra's Cauldron and everything, they add some optional rules. Yeah. Um, there's three that matter. There are three that really affect it, and two that are controversial. Yes. The one that is not controversial, basically at all, is basically letting you pick your um, background skills and stuff rather than picking from a list. Yeah. Which is fine, honestly, because sometimes it's like, wait, well, no, it really wouldn't. Like, I have an idea for my background, and it really makes more sense to him to have survival and stealth. Which there might be a combination somewhere of those two. If you look hard enough, yeah. But, like, look, I want to play an escaped slave. Yeah. I want to be tough as nails, have very few items, and know how to use, you know, one type of tool. Yeah. Vehicles, because I learned how to ride a horse very early on to get out of there. Yeah. Survive, because we'll, we'll do this, and sneak, because I stuck out of there. Makes sense. Yeah. All makes sense right there. So, no one really complained about the customizing background. They were kind of annoying anyways. Honestly, yes. Um, Nothing really fit ever, really. Yeah, no, it never worked out quite as you wanted to, unless you were playing something box standard. Yeah, like a, like a very clear archetype. Yeah. Now, the other one, the ones that really mattered are the race rules. So, the first one is, every race in D&D gets a bonus to stats. Yes. Uh, humans either get plus two to one thing and a feat, sorry, plus one to two things or a feat. Uh, dwarves get plus uh, two to constitution, and then depending on your subspecies, they get one to wisdom or two to strength for the basics. Yeah. Everything's light. And Tasha's got rid of that. They said, no, while that might be true in general, not every dwarf is like that. I'm going to keep using dwarf as the example because actually last night I made a dwarf character with this. Nice, and okay. Dwarves benefit the most from this. Okay, yeah, yeah, understood. They still get their racial features, so you still get the deep sense, the poison resistance and all that. But saying that no dwarf is super charismatic and everything and no one will get this bonus is kind of unrealistic, so we're going to change that. Okay. The second thing they did is just let you make a custom race. Yeah. Uh, which you add plus two to one stat. Yep. And you get a free feat. And then either get low light vision or skill. So you're very close to a very human. Yeah. But I would say better. Arguably. Arguably. It depends. Um, depending on how you get your stats in point by systems or standard array, 15 is max. Yeah. So plus one to two things rolls it over to the even number on two stats. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that might matter. So it, that one, it is, it is almost entirely just a very human. Right. But, you know, if I want to look like a rabbit person i can a rabbit man a rabbit man or if i want to be a shrek yeah or yeah 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 i see exactly <laughs> this is uh this should be fun <laughs> i had not thought of that before but now i have a character in mind i <laughs> i made a character last night and i wasted it by not making shrek yeah i, I would have made donkey <sighs> the worst the worst part is i've had those two characters in a DD campaign before nice okay but i wasn't running it Oh, I, I was see. just in that campaign. Oh, okay. So, uh, I yep. was playing like a character of mine's son, ah. and everyone else was playing super jokey characters, and I should not have played my character because I I wasted it. I could have played like okay here literally three characters: Shrek, Donkey, mm -hmm. Duke Devlin, mm, okay, Yu Gi Oh, the yep. American Wizard, who <laughs> took certain feats and everything to meta magic them for things that didn't even make sense. So he meta magic. So he could cast maximum freedom. Yeah, that's awesome. All right. <laughs> it didn't make sense. That 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 is not how that boat uh, that uh, meta magic worked. But he still cast it. He sacrificed a spell slot two levels higher just so he could cast maximum freedom. Have you ever seen a Yu-Gi-Oh bridge? Absolutely. Yeah, I love how he's Canadian. <laughs> oh God. Um. So that was the the customizable race and the other thing. The stats. Uh, the stats. Yeah. Um. So. Ted, where where are you on the the? I I would say, the the biggest thing that usually these things come from is like Twitter. Yes. Like the Twitter cancel is, culture or whatever. This has been a big thing on Facebook. Facebook too. Yeah. Um, uh, and there's basically three camps. Yeah. There's the oh, this is good. I don't feel pigeonholed by my race or spend twenty minutes looking for the particular sub race. Yeah, yeah. Then there's the people that says this removes all distinction of species in this. Uh game so you know this kind of makes everything kind of bland yeah and then there's camp three going guys these are optional rules for a game you play why are you having an emotional reaction 
Oh, I thought Camp Three was going to be uh, the SJW kind of situation. No, that's 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 real. That's really Camp Two. That's Camp. Oh, that's more Camp Two. Okay. That that those the kind of this is SJW uh, influence is just Camp Two. That's kind of a complaint they have. With, don't get me wrong, Wizards has done weird things with that recently. True. Um. So like, I'm not saying they're completely wrong, but it might be over exaggerated. It might be over exaggerated. For example, um, one thing they did that a lot of people called. Uh, SJW stuff is they remove like evil races as a whole, which um, it's basically not that orcs are inherently evil or anything. It's that you know they're kind of raised in the wilderness in a die do or die society. Yeah, uh, eh. yeah. Or um, they changed to loth orcs a little bit. I mean, Drow have always been kind of interesting because all right, let's take these super fair and beautiful people. All right, yes, but if they have black skin, they're evil. Well, it's not even black; it's obsidian. So it's like yeah, it, it's, I, yeah. It, yeah. It gets worse in Eberron, where they live in the woods and the jungles and everything. Oh, okay. That yeah, that makes it a little more. <laughs> yeah, Eber- more Eberron. On the nose. I normally love Eberron. Right, right. But then there's like, hmm. Little, so little you, odd. You, you, you put them in the jungle, huh? I okay. So let's uh, let's let's talk about this just a little here. Um, so I'm I'm more in Camp Two. And I'm not uh, wholly taking in the SJW thing or anything like that. Um, I agree that it makes it a little bit more bland. I understand, like, the freedom of it. But I do think uh, having, like, those sub-races and then just kind of having to stick to those rules is more interesting to me. But that's just me. Yeah, I am very much in Camp 1. I mean, in 3.5, when this was more of a thing, Yeah. if I was making a character... I would pour over every book possible to find the correct sub race for the stats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, there was always one. You know, if you want to, if you want to play a charisma dwarf, you had to play the dream dwarf, but you could do it. Yeah. Okay. Like the, there was always a way around it if you looked. Yeah. I mean, hell, in that in that system, you could also like make elves not awful if you look for the right one. Okay. Elves in three point five suck. There was literally two types of good elves. Yeah. Desert elves. And dead elves, and I do mean that. Uh, if you played an undead elf, it was great. Yeah. Okay. Because right. you had you didn't have a Constitution score, which they took a minus two. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I see. That sucks. Oh my god! It was. You needed Constitution to concentrate on like the spells and everything. Right. So why would they have like? Well. It, they, yeah. They weren't good wizards either. Ah. Uh, Their favorite class was wizard, but it was a cultural thing for them. Okay. They actually were really bad at it. Ah. Uh. <laughs> That's kind of, that's weird. Yeah. It's like, was... like an orc is really good at being a fighter, but I'm sorry, an orc wants to be a fighter, but he's just not good at being a fighter. That wouldn't work in any other kind of situation. Yeah, really. no, elves were really bad in general. Like, it's like, how do you, it's like, oh, these creatures are on the climb. Well, no crap, they get sick all the time. Even if, though they can live forever. Yeah. But if you, and by the way, if you, sh- if you shot a, a elven peasant with a bow, and you shot a human peasant with a bow, the human had a 20% better recovery chance. <laughs> than the elf? Yeah. Yeah, okay, That yeah, that doesn't make sense to me, but, yeah, yeah what well, do I, I should know? I shouldn't say recovery chance. Chance of just dying. Okay, right. Okay. Which is not insignificant when we're talking about populations. Yeah, no, you're right. If I... you are delicate and slow to reproduce. Yeah, that's even worse, so. That's, that, that is odd. Yeah, so that that's Tasha's guide. That's the thing that came up. Now, I actually did this yesterday. Yeah. And I used one of the alternate rules because I wanted to play a dwarf that did not spend time in the mines or anything to build up his arms. He yeah. was a super dexterous dwarf who kind of went to a special school for that sort of thing. Right, okay. And um, I picked the athlete background. Um, <laughs> the dwarf went to a clown college? <laughs> but sadly, the clown college closed no, no, down. <laughs> no. uh, he was a chariot racer. Okay, that's actually really cool. I like that yeah, idea. So, like, he's really good, like, good with subtle motions of the um, ropes and the whips and everything. Ah, okay, okay. He still has his bonus to constitution. He's a monk. Yeah. Um, he's super skinny and everything. Um, and that's the character I made. And one of my kids is not my kid. One of my students is running um the game. Yeah. And I made my character. And I gave him a ridiculous name that was a reference to another campaign Kevin and I played it. So his name is Razzle, son of Dazzle. <laughs> or Razzle Dazzleson. Ah, <laughs> uh, I love that. Okay, Kevin. Yeah. This bugs me. You know what the kid goes? Oh, you listen to Bob Barden. 
<laughs> like, what's that? <laughs> it's a D&D podcast about, like, four guys in Bard College. Oh, Bard's God. Razzle Son of Dazzle is a dwarf character. Yeah. <laughs> so I listened to one last night. I'm like, oh, my God, he's not joking. It really is. Yeah. Now, this bugs me because a lot of podcasts I've been listening to have, like, similar ideas that I do not want to be accused of stealing. For example, uh, what this was recently, so it chronologically, because it, it's cool I had the idea first. Yeah. One in not another D&D podcast, one of the characters, his name is Hank Hogfish. But for a while, he just introduces himself as Honk. Oh, God. All right, so, yeah. And I had a character who was a goblin <laughs> named Honk E. Honk. Yeah. And yes, the E stood for entertainment. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what the hell yeah i well i i like to think of it as the uh whole uh someone in arkansas created the radio and you create the radio in china uh so yeah. like I, I like to think of it like that kind of situation because that's not a i mean don't want to get accused of stealing no but, i just don't want yeah. to like I, like i didn't want i did not make a reference to that uh podcast i made a reference to my own a, a campaign kevin for real yeah so don't get that twisted, all right? That really bugged me. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, like, what are the chances of that? I, that's, it's even even more now as we get more niche into how we're doing things. That that's the chances are getting slimmer and slimmer right? here. It's almost like I want you to go to a casino here and just see how that how uh, you roll, uh, my friend. Uh, yeah. So that's the weird thing in D and D. Yeah. I I so far enjoyed playing uh, playing. Can we have she haven't gone to combat, but we woke up. Tied uh, to the uh, beds of a ship, and I managed to wiggle through because of my decks. And then I thought this was some weird after party, and my fans were like doing some scenario. So I proceeded to find something to uh, write with and autograph most of them. Nice. Okay. So you're prepared. Very good. Uh, I I like that. I like that thought of your character. That's very nice. He really uh, just thinks he he really thinks he's a super celebrity, but is not in the right country. Yeah. Okay. I yes. Uh, he also um he also sounds uh, Canadian. Oh, even better. Okay. <laughs> We're like Yukonish, but still. Yeah, so I get you. Uh, is he a believer? Has not come up to it, probably. Oh God, that'd be great. Uh, he does come into the John Cena theme song. I play that on my phone every time he enters a room. That's awesome. I I love that. Um. So we've uh, we talked about that for a little bit, but here's another thing Ted just wants to talk about very quickly if All we right. have the time. Yep, we, I think we do. Yeah. Kevin, uh, yeah, yeah that's fine. okay. Bitcoin mining. Yes, Bitcoin mining. Okay, I know nothing about this. So Bitcoin cryptocurrency. Yep. Really, the first one to become big. Yeah. That's the only reason people heard of it. I, having now looked into a lot of cryptocurrencies, it's actually not particularly great. Okay. Yeah. So here's how this works. There's basically a Bitcoin program that everyone has access to. You can download it for free. Yep. And what it does is it looks at every computer that's currently m- trying to mine Bitcoin. Yeah. And makes a problem, like not a problem, a code. Right. That is a certain amount of digits long. It's thousands. Yeah. And it's based on how much computing power is looking at it. Oh, So the okay. more people and more computing power, the bigger the number gets. Okay. And it's designed to keep it to be every 10 minutes can be solved pretty much automatically. Right. I forget if it starts every 10 minutes and it just as quickly as possible, you know, happens. But I think it's so it gets solved in 10 minutes. Yeah. Can be quicker, can be longer. Right. And I was always said, oh, it has to solve the math problem. And all these computers, you know, just try to solve the math problem. And whatever we get first, it gets to compile the um, next block in the chain. Oh, okay. Now, blockchain is basically a ledger. Right. Of all the transactions in Bitcoin. And it does 1,500 transactions every 10 minutes. Okay. And for one of your transactions to go through, any um, transaction you had to, uh, you made before that one has to go through. Oh, okay. So you can't spend Bitcoin while you, are, uh, or it can't be processed until the first one you've done has been processed. Oh, all right. Gotcha. Why would you want to be the one to compile all this? Two reasons. One, every time you get you do this, bit more Bitcoin are created. Yeah. It's currently twelve and a half. It, I think halves every certain amount of years. Yeah. Just have for a few months ago, and also tips to get higher on the priority list. They can add a cash bonus to anyone who 
compiles theirs first. Ah, uh, I see. Now I see. Now, this is fine. It's kind of a decent system. Yeah. The problem is, I, I really have two problems with this. One is practically, and one is terminologically, I guess. Oh, okay, right. So, the term one, I just found this out a few days ago. Someone said, like, oh, you have to solve the math problem. I'm like, yeah, but what is the math problem? Like, physically, what is the math problem to get to this big equation? I want to yeah. look it up. Right. It's not a math problem, Kevin. Okay. What is it, then? So, what happens is you do this, and t you do all the math, and it tells you, okay, it's in this range. Yeah. It has somewhere between 700 and 715 digits. Oh, okay. And then it's a bunch of computers just guessing random numbers. Oh, okay. So that's not it's a math problem. Brute forcing an, a um, lock into encryption. Yeah. So it's more like hacking than... Yeah, it's way closer to hacking. Yeah. And brute force hacking. Nothing interesting. Okay. Which really bugs me. Because that's a ton of computing power. Yeah. Like, I forget what percentage of the world's computing power is devoted to this. Right. And I want it to be solving a math problem. Like, I want this to be put into, great, every time you... You add a new digit to pi, you get a big number. Ah, okay. Like I you see. could be used like if I was going to make a cryptocurrency, it would be pi pieces. Right. Oh, that yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That wow. That's that's a that's a smarter way to I think do it. Yes. But, yeah. And number two, the time delay is awful. One thousand five hundred transactions every ten minutes. Mm, okay. Bank of America makes three times that a minute. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, that's that's very slow in comparison. Yeah, the fact that it's based on how much computing power is going in yeah. instead of how many orders need to be processed. Ah, uh, okay. You know, the time should not be, oh, we have to keep it to 10 minutes, so we have to bring it up. Like, yeah, but there's 3 million backlogs. Right. Why is it not based on going through that and, like, you know, saying, oh, I want to get through the entire backlog every hour. Yeah. At what rate do I have to process to do that? Okay, I see what you're saying, yeah. Hmm, yeah, why isn't it like that? That's kind of weird. Yeah, not even joking, Dogecoin is a better system. <laughs> uh, and I'm glad I introduced you to yeah, Dogecoin. Dogecoin, um, which is what we use as in Ninja Burger for currency for our uh, home game, uh, is a stupid cryptocurrency, which is accepted about 10 places around the planet. Yep, as uh, it should be. Yeah, if you want vapes in Canada or hot sauce, we got you covered. Yeah, we got you covered with that doge, my dude. <laughs> it recently uh, went up several thousand times in value. Yep. Because some TikToker mentioned it. Yep, several actually. I think uh, they had like this, It basically it's a scam, Uh, not really a scam, but a scam in itself, where you uh, tell people to like through a social media kind of platform to buy something at a certain price and then the stock value goes up and then you just sell your shares. No, that's a scam. Yeah. It's called the pump and dump. Yeah, pump and dump. Yep. And exactly. So they're doing a lot of that. Yeah, I mean, that's not illegal with cryptocurrency. No, no, it's not. But it's still shady as all heck. Oh, yeah, it's shady as can be. Oh, I did not know what that was why. I thought it was some people like, making jokes about it. Uh, but Dogecoin does 1,500 a minute. And actually, they did a few changes to it. And now it's, I think it could be at the minimum 30 seconds. But because of its amount of computing power, it tends to be about 42 seconds. Okay, gotcha. So that's that's interesting. That's so different. And there are, but here's the other thing. Um, two things. One, there are tips in right. Dogecoin. You can't bribe your way to the front. And instead of having every uh, so many transactions or anything, you always get 50 Dogecoin if you're the one to compile. Oh, okay. That's interesting. All right. So it doesn't, it's not a, it's what's called an inflationary coin because the amount always increases. Right. Which is bad terminology as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, but because you can't bribe your way to the top, it makes it a more even system. Yeah, more fair. So that's interesting. I, it's it's uh, it's kind of fun to learn about these like cryptocurrencies. Yeah, it was something I looked up a few months ago. Like, yeah, we did a deep dive into basically because of Kevin. A deep dive into cryptocurrencies. I was trying to figure out how I could make money doing it. Yeah, right, right. Um, I could, but it'd be shady. I'll talk tell Kevin about my plans later. Okay, fair enough. Um, yeah. Yeah, everything involved this is shady, but it was just interesting that Bitcoin was by far the worst designed one. Yeah, and it's the most popular. Yeah, it just happened to be the first. Ethereum, its like main competitor, you're right, is number two, like is way better system. Yeah, but early on there was some problems with the programming, so I think that one just kind of get blacklisted, uh, despite the fact that it is a superior program in every way. Okay, I see. So hmm, that's that's interesting. 
Uh, it's also interesting, too, that I went to, like, a... You know those things where you just spill all your coins into it and just, like, counts up for yeah. you? Yeah, you can buy Bitcoin. <laughs> I saw. I, the first time I saw that, I, I was at what I could only describe as the sketchiest hostel I've ever stayed at that wasn't, like... Dirty. Mine was Shaw's. Yeah, no, I was, <laughs> it was in a hostel in Lithuania. Okay. <laughs> and um, not even joking, this, this is a recurring theme where I keep meeting these people. Like, there was a group of American guys staying there that all just got back from Kurdistan fighting with the rebels. Okay. I keep meeting these people. I okay. don't know why. It's a, some, it's a group of people I will keep encountering in my life over and over again. Um, war never changes. War never changes, especially in the Middle East. Yeah. Um, uh. But you know, like the fact that like, like, there was there was a weird amount of people to the point where I was like, okay, are you, is this hostel associated with this somehow? Yeah, that's... Um, yeah. I actually did not stay much time in the hostel because I had the flu and I was very sick and I didn't want to infect everybody. Yeah, polite of you. So yeah. I was stuck outside with the waiting in winter. Not not great, but... No, thankfully, cathedrals were basically always empty and that's the thing I want to see. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's sad. Yeah, I, luckily I was healed by Easter, so I got to go to Easter now. Nice, okay. But while I was there, there was just one thing, uh, uh, ATM, that yeah. let you buy and sell Bitcoin and nothing else. That is weird. All right. And it did not accept cash. Wow. So just only took Bitcoin, huh? Oh, no. You, you could put in money, like credit card, oh. and buy Bitcoin. That's, that seems... Or have Bitcoin add it, or have it sell it and add it to your accounts. That's weird. It's very weird. It's very sketchy. Yeah, it's, that's super sketchy. Between the Rebel Fighters and the Bitcoin machine, I was a little bit uh, concerned. Yeah, I That I being mean, said, everything else about this was just like a super hippie, normal hostel. Okay, except for except for that very uh, <laughs> very uh, alarm bell ringing kind yeah, of thing right two there. Things, like, I'm, don't get me wrong, I'm very pro-Kurd. Um, <laughs> yep. I'm really pro-Kurd, actually. But it was just like... Why are all of you here now? Is this weird? Right, right. And why is there a Bitcoin machine? Yeah, and those kind of things start uh, not adding up, but just kind of raising some questions. Yes. Um, so, yeah, that's all I got to say about that. Bitcoin, it's a lot of wasted computer power. Re- I feel least... like a lot of people agree with you on that. I mean, I'm not even arguing against, like, the system or anything. Well, let me that. I'm not against the concept. Yeah. But it's like you're putting so much computer power so much electricity yeah towards brute forcing encryptions yeah like and i really wish like they were doing this solve for pi just get i mean we can never get a full answer to pi where it's like the million digit yeah if i was me about it, we could probably get further yeah and every little bit does matter for like super high end stuff you know what that that's a fair point um We'll talk to the uh, we'll talk to the local Bitcoin trader that works in your village, and then we'll try and see if we can talk to the upper chain here. Yeah, so, well, we'd have to make an, our own cryptocurrency. Okay, our own cryptocurrency. So let's talk, Ted. All right, let's go with some quick names here. See, I want to be based around like name has to be based around Pi. Okay, okay, I see what you're saying. Um, you can't just call it Pi Coin. I'm... I was thinking Pi pieces. Oh, all right, slices. Slices. I'm going to have sli- pie slices. Yeah, I like... Yeah. You got to get your own slice of the pie. No, yeah. Is it a piece of the pie, though? I mean, I think you could use that interchangeably, like piece or slice or... Yeah. Listeners, tell us what you think about this. Yeah, <laughs> please tell us what you want to... Uh, what do you want us to name our cryptocurrency? Yes, as Based as, on pie. As soon as either of us know, learn how to program. Well, I, I don't know. I, that's what I got clones for, man. That's true. As soon as, as, soon as Kevin27 um, finishes his master's in programming. Yeah, as soon as Kevin twenty seven gets through with that, and then Kevin thirty three gets like more of those servers up and running, we should be okay. All right, all so. right, everyone. Well, thank you for listening. Let let us know. Let us what you uh, let us know what you thought about Exodus, and please donate enough money to change my religion. I'm I <laughs> I hope it's not Mormon because because <laughs> I you once know, again, I, if someone does Mormon, I can do Mormon then something else. So yeah, we could we could, that's just a stepping stone. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Hey, if you give an, but um, if if you give me enough, I'll get I'll go through the courses, talk to the um, uh, Mormon priest, and get the second baptisms and everything. There is more. I can go deeper down the Mormon rabbit hole if people give me, me more money. All not right. even me money. It's one of the nothing's going to me. This is just going to a family that needs to remake their life after a terrible loss. Yeah. So it's all going to a good place. Um, and 
yeah, if you can and want to have Ted as a Mormon and or a Shinto priest and or maybe some other religion that we don't know about. You want me to be Muslim? I'll become Muslim. It does not matter. I will do anything. My pride is gone. Yeah. This is, this is where I sell out. This is what I'm willing to do. All right. Yeah, fair enough. His soul is for sale and the price tag is not that high. No, so. frankly. <laughs> Honestly, I'm kind of insulting myself here at the low price tag, to be perfectly honest. I did not realize my dignity had a 250 price tag. Yeah, I mean, there's some... there's <laughs> In the in that game of yours, Fall Out Boy would charge more for more dances than that, my friend. But that's fine. <laughs> he got at least 400. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't, now that this one, I don't like this. However, I really want this family to do well. And you're my my family at this point. Please give this to me generously. I'm begging. Yeah, I no, I agree. Um, but thank you, everybody, for listening. We'll see you all next time when we watch a great movie. And hopefully I will be a different religion by then. Bye. Yep, bye.